The battle between humans and deadly epidemics had been raging for several centuries. In 1918, during the waning years of the First World War, the human race was hit by one of the deadliest pandemics the world had ever known, the Spanish flu. A deadly influenza that infected about 500 million people worldwide, or one-third of the world's population then. The disease took the lives of some 50 million people, making it the deadliest viral outbreak in human history. Spanish flu 1918. The mere mention of it will strike terror into the minds of virologists and infectious disease physicians. It also happened in a situation where the world was becoming more and more connected and coupled together with World War I, it was the perfect recipe for complete disaster. Troops were moving across continents. You know, people were more engaged towards the war. And let's hide the flu. People were suppressing it, letting the poor soldiers go out into the front line. They were falling sick and they were getting to the next uh, port of call, happily disseminating this infection. It became such a global problem. In fact, the Spanish flu pandemic had killed more U.S. soldiers than the war itself. Even the 28th U.S. President, Woodrow Wilson, reportedly contracted the flu in early 1919 while negotiating the Treaty of Versailles, which ended World War I. The Spanish flu was caused by the H1N1 virus, similar to the bird flu. So how did Spanish flu become so terrible? There was a significant mutation, such that there was a jump from an animal host to a human. As you realise, viruses adapted to animal hosts do very badly for the humans when they jump over. It causes a lot of damage, causes a lot of injury to the lungs, and in turn, kills a lot of people. The Spanish flu only ended its killing streak in 1919. For several decades after, these killer viruses remained dormant, only to re-emerge decades later in the 1950s in the form of another lethal viral outbreak, the Asiatic flu. It started in Guizhou, China. By 1957, the Asiatic flu had hit Singapore, which had a large migrant Chinese population. Its deadly reach extended to the US too, and by the time it was over, some four million people had perished. And then there was a reassortment of that particular flu strain to create a novel one, which was in the 1960s, this time a Hong Kong flu. Fast forward to 2009, the deadly H1N1 virus reared its ugly head again. The swine flu, which originated in Mexico, spread rapidly around the world, which led the World Health Organization to declare it the first influenza pandemic of the 21st century. Final death toll, 290,000 people. And at that time, it was thought that this was going to be the new Spanish flu because a lot of us were very worried at that point. And now it has become part of the regular seasonal human influenza. A virus is an almost perfect enemy simply because it is invisible to the naked eye. How do viruses kill their prey? Because the virus is so smart, it's many, many steps ahead of the game because what it does is that it changes its genetic form. Viruses are such a tiny little uh, organism, so much smaller than bacteria, manifold. But they just have a little protein coat. All they need to do is to just attach to the whole cell like a parasite. They need the whole cell, some other domain to survive. They inject that material into the whole cell, which is their own genetic expression, and that one terrorizes the cell. It essentially takes over the body's machinery and then it directs its own show. It creates uh, copies of itself, which then goes on to replicate further, destroying the cell that produces it. So in this way, it exacts a catastrophe and it continues to perpetuate if this particular pathogen, either is it a virus or, or bacteria, when it infects a certain population, it gets very comfortable. They know that the human body will probably get 
immunity will get uh, protection against it in order to clear it or the humans will be smart enough to design drugs to tackle them. So in order to escape this, they tend to, to mutate. And it's this particular ability of a virus to mutate and outsmart the human host cells that worries experts. It put humans on the back foot even after decades of trying to defeat these viruses, making them formidable foes. In a recent paper, the Chinese have demonstrated that since the introduction of the virus to now, significant mutations have occurred in the COVID-19 virus. This tells you in a span of one to two months, mutations are ongoing. While we are trying to adapt in the fight of the virus, the virus is trying to adapt to us human beings. We have to race faster to contain 